anytime you're attacking an arm bar. The arm bar is, uh, is pretty good friends with a couple of their techniques. One of those techniques is a back tick. So anytime I'm attacking with an arm bar, there's, it, there's a potential for a back tick to come out of that. And uh, the most basic example of the way that works is, is a technical mount position. So Daryl can let me down one real quick. So your basic technical mount, your opponent's on his side. I have one foot in, cinched up nice and tight to his hip here. Not, okay, not leaving space, I'm getting this nice and controlled right against his hip, right against his belt line. My shin's kind of going right across. My knee is a little bit uh, a little bit tucked into his shoulder blades here. I got nice tight control. I'm, uh, I'm keeping my weight down. I'm, not, I'm trying to not lean over. I want to kind of keep my weight on my opponent or behind my opponent here. Now this is, this is a pretty strong position, very dominant position. There's a lot of ways to get to technical mount, but I want to talk about uh, what to do when you do get there. So one of your most basic attacks from technical mount is um, it, it's kind of a, a self-defense move, right? You get the they have the, they have the headlock, and you cross, you put pressure on the face, boom, you turn this into an arm bar, right? You start stepping over, start attacking the arm bar. Very basic, very fundamental attack. Now, when you're rolling with somebody that knows jujitsu, that's familiar with how jujitsu works, they know that arm bar's there. So immediately when they get when they get when you technical mount somebody, they're hiding those elbows, they're crunching everything nice and tight, they're keeping their, their elbow from popping up. As soon as Daryl's elbow goes like this, it's game over, and he knows that. So I can use that thread of the arm bar to open up the back tick. So I could go for the arm bar, but just the idea of Daryl knowing that I might go for it gives me opportunities to go elsewhere to advance my position. So I'm gonna do that here in technical mount. So when I come in, when I get my technical mount, I'm gonna get nice and low. I put my chest on his shoulder because I want to keep Daryl from turning towards me because I like him kind of up on his side a little bit. Exposes his back, right? Because as dominant as Mount is, when Daryl's flat, when Daryl's flat here, the mat's blocking me from taking his back. Technical Mount gives me control and it gives me a pathway to get to that back. So I'm here, get nice and low. Come underneath his head, getting this wrist, okay? So I'm going to set up this a very similar grip to what I was doing from, uh, from my grip break series. When I come in here, I'm going to grab my own wrist. So I end up with that, that kind of Kimura style grip right right here. Now, when we were doing a grip break series, we were kind of here. I'm getting that, that figure four control, that, that two-on-one kind of grip that gives me a lot of power over Daryl. So I'm going in here. I come underneath the elbow. Now, if that elbow is really tight in, I can just kind of bounce it in to get my grip break. Now, if I want, I can flop this out, use that to do a cross face, and start going to an arm bar. Most people are familiar with that. So we're going to use this to set the back. So since Daryl's hiding from that arm bar, I can even pull up on it like I'm trying to get it, get Daryl to really kind of, get Daryl to really suck in nice and tight. And hide from it. He sucks in nice and tight. Now I'm going to use that to take, take his back because he's, he's, uh, he's, he's defending the arm bar, but by sucking everything in, he's really limited his mobility and giving me access to other avenues. So here, when I get this grip, I'm going to kind of just slink my shoulders back, get my chin like right on his shoulder here, nice and low, rather than being over top. Trying to sink behind him. That way I'm a little bit closer to his back. If I'm here, I'm kind of like on top of a T. I want to be more behind it. So here, nice and low. Once I get this position, now this back foot, we'll look at this detail in a second. It folds in. I'm gonna sink back and use that to drag Daryl into my back tape position. So spin this way. Spin it. Good for you get my technical mount. So a lot of times the technical mount, you'll kind of keep this foot out a little bit. It's kind of like a kickstand. That way if Daryl's really driving back into me, I can use this to absorb a little pressure. But when I go to take his back, I sink low, I fold that foot in. That way it's really easy, easy transition for me to roll over it. If I keep my ankle out, I'm trying to crunch my own foot. It doesn't feel very good. I go here, get nice and low. I'm dragging, use this two on one grip, lot of tight control. Drag him all the way to the other side. Fall on this side, set my hook. Now, that's an important detail. Come here, Daryl. Please scan him, please. <clears throat> so I'm falling on this side. So I'm, my, my first hook, which was my technical mount position, which was all the way across his belt line. We'll come back to this concept. This first hook is always on the mat. It's just facing the mat. My free hook is, is, is uh, facing the ceiling. Because that way I got control of Daryl's hips. Okay? But I control of Daryl's hips. It's very difficult for him to... Uh, very difficult for him to turn. That, that foot pressure keeps him from going like this. As soon as I take this, put this hook in, take this hook out, go ahead and pop your hips out, very easy for him to escape. That's why when I take that technical mount, I want to go, I want to go all the way, all the way over the other side. I'm gonna stop right there. So these next couple techniques are gonna be, they're gonna be united by that threat of the arm bar. They know that if their arm's vulnerable, I'm gonna attack it. So they start sucking it in. 
that creates pathways to their back. So we're going to explore that concept a lot. It's a lot of fun.